Well, hello again. Welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And this is the first post-election uh, episode. Um, loser, yeah. loser, chicken, loser. Loser, loser. <laughs> Um, Closer than yeah, you know, I, I've been you in know, the past, so I'm so not too upset about I, it. I um for those who want one, because I still get people. I mean, it, we're what a week out now. It feels like much <laughs> longer than a week. Um, feels oh, like a lifetime. I ago. have people continue, <laughs> still asking, like, what, who, who won, who lost? Because this year, more than most. I found it very difficult, even for myself, who knew where to find the information the results, to get election yes. results. Even on Wednesday, I yep. I felt like I had no idea who won, who lost, what right. the story was. So, in a nutshell, um, as it stands today, there, we're still in the recount process here in New eight, Hampshire. Eight recounts from Democrats, eight recounts from Republicans. Republicans. Um, yesterday was Gary Daniels' Senate race. Um, he prevailed. Is, prevailed. Yep. And I guess out of the three Senate races that the Democrats... Um, are challenging. He had the smallest oh, margin. margin of error. I mean, Kevin Abart has something like 800 vote difference. Yeah, I, I was surprised actually well, by some of the, un, unless, you know, there's some unseen thing. Yeah. But for folks back home, basically, here's what happened. New Hampshire, I believe, is actually the only legislature in America that flipped the House. Uh, I think, I don't know if it was about flipping the House. I know we are the only state legislature, I believe, that flipped the state Senate. So um, we have, uh, so obviously Governor Sununu did extremely well. Uh, Republicans took the house took and the house took the I senate think, even right. without me yeah, I know. and Tammy. um it looks like the house right now is 213 to 187 yep um so that's what 13 and 20 i can't do math that's 26 vote difference sway, sway. you know 26 yep. votes um the Senate is for, back to 1410, where it, it always should be. Should have been 1510, you know. And currently, the Executive Council is 4 1. Yes. So, so that's what, a pretty strong yeah. mandate. I was going to say, for, so what I think Governor you will Sununu. see in the next two years is um, a lot of growth. A lot of improvement, yep. a less societal malaise, yep. um, actually, you know, directing the money where it needs yep. to go, maybe a little more efficiency, yep. uh, you know, like, yeah, you know, and you'll like, see, I, th I do think you'll see, um, or at least I'm hoping we'll see things. School choice. Uh, I think school choice for me personally, if I had to like say, there's a couple things though, school choice, um, Maybe the forty-six million that the EC was sitting right. on for the past uh, year and a half. Maybe the which state, maybe the public, public charter, charter schools, schools, schools will actually get the money that's sitting on a table someplace. Yes, um, I do think. Um, I am fairly confident that Kate Baker is spending much, much time trying to figure out what to propose um, with the legislator. Yeah, actually, um, I was um, at a meeting on Saturday with uh, the New Hampshire Liberty yeah. Alliance where they got, um, they I had, believe, 94 NHLA-endorsed candidates awesome. made it through to the House. So that's almost 100. Yeah, so that's one a quarter good... of the New Hampshire legislature yeah. are pro-liberty people. What does that mean? That means people who put people first, right. i.e. we're not going to split us all into different groups. We're not going to, you know, right. create collectivized groups and then, you know, put everyone against each other while complaining that things aren't equal. No, what we are going to do is put individuals first, yeah. which is the fairest and yeah. nicest way to play in this sandbox. So uh, 94 NHLA endorsed candidates made it to the state house and three NHLA endorsed senators made yeah. it to the state house. So, I mean, there's lots of good things. I, I'm always, you know, I, I always... Sometimes I feel like I'm a, an eternal optimist. Um, I keep reminding, <laughs> as opposed to Carla. <laughs> well, no, and I am. I'm, I'm cynical. Don't get me wrong, but I, I keep saying I found myself in the past week reminding people you always have to look forward. Just keep looking forward. You know, um, we did elect. We did improve the number of Republican representatives in Manchester. Yes, we had four. Now we're going to have six. We could possibly have seven or eight, but. Right now we have six. You've got um, okay, uh, st struggle with this. Mark McLean, who was an incumbent, was reelected. Mark Warden, who was an incumbent, was reelected. Larry Gagney was an incumbent and was reelected. Will Infantine, who had retired and came back, um, was elected and will chair the Labor Committee again. Um, 
Ross Berry ran with Mark McLean and was elected. And Dick Marston, who's over in Ward 12, who had um, served in the past, He's won. So, yep. we, you know, they're semi incumbent people. So we have six. Uh, Macy McNair in Ward 8 has a recount, recount on Friday morning. She's only 18 votes out. Oh, wow. Um, there's a couple other recounts, but she's the closest. And there was, while we're talking about things, um, in Ward 8, there were issues. This, I, I'm. One of the few people who probably every year feels fairly confident in all of the electoral process in New Hampshire for a variety of reasons that I don't need to go into. There were so many bad things that I heard about on election day. First of all, I'm going to say this. So in Ward 10, because this was personal for me, in Ward 10, um, our little um, area where we're allowed to be outside of the polls, the, the outside the electioneering mm -hmm. space, where everybody who is supposed to stay, whether you're elected, not elected, running, volunteering, whatever. But not if you're Lou Delisandro. So as I'm standing there, <laughs> over near the door, now supposedly I believe they moved this out this way because the people were concerned that, you know, COVID comes sideways or something. But anyways, Lou D'Alessandro stood there. With, I might add, a Biden-Harris yes. mask. Yeah. But I'm not allowed to wear my t-shirt. Right. So he's standing there outside of the doorway, no more than 10 feet away from the doorway. 10 feet? He was literally, <laughs> like, from here to this chair. From the door. every voter that As comes they in. they came in. If you read New Hampshire law, that is exactly what electioneering is. So I went inside because, you know... They don't know what's going on. Uh, and I asked to speak with... <laughs> well, Although he was standing right next to the police officer who was um, also kind of, you know, helping him. The, uh, uh, I don't think... I, the cop was just standing there all day long. But anyways, he, um, I went in. I asked to speak to the moderator. The moderator was busy. I told, was told I would have to wait. I waited. Pay, but I did was told I had to take off my Trump hat because that was a problem. Um, the Biden mask right here, greeting voters, not a problem. Um, so I did, because I wasn't trying to be difficult. I just had stepped in and it had been snowing, you know, minutes before. <laughs> yeah, um, it was a weird weather so day. So <laughs> I was, I waited a few minutes and finally realizing there's no way, they're not even getting the moderator. Um, I mentioned to the gentleman who was working at the door, I said, the Senator can't campaign right there. He has to be outside of the perimeter. And he looked at me and said, well, he's not campaigning. He's helping with a drive up absentee ballot thing. I don't know what a drive up absentee ballot thing is. I didn't see him take there, any ballots no. or so, the, no one drove up. At there that was moment, no processing at for that, that same setup. moment. Heidi Hamer, who's the ward clerk, walks by and literally screeches at me. Tammy, you shouldn't compl be complaining. I don't know why questioning why somebody's being allowed to electioneer is complaining or why I'm getting yelled at for questioning it. So I was like, whatever. And I went back outside and Dan noticed that within, I'd say two minutes, Lou got in the car with his driver and left. So I don't know what happened to the drive up absentee ballot thing that he was helping with, but he wasn't helping anybody. He was electioneering. He was campaigning within the space that you're not supposed to campaign in. So that was my personal experience. Then I hear in Ward 8, and this is true. This isn't all just speculation because it did actually happen. We know it. Um, when the ballot machines get filled, because they fill up, they open them and they take the ballots out. There's nothing nefarious about that. They take the ballots out. They put them in a box. You know, They've already gone through the number and then they're over there, right? One of the poll workers started handing out the already filled out question ballots, the city election ballots. Oh, we should add for viewers back home. That so passed. that the so question don't... one did pass, yes. passed by over 60%. Yeah. I find that very surprising I, because I at a minimum, you would think that, uh, I mean, I didn't have my glasses when I was voting, but I was—I knew I was going to vote no, but I was just kind of like trying to figure out the language. Yeah, and a lot of like, people said oh. that, so I'm very surprised that about um, So And so when your property taxes and your rents go up, thank the Democrats. Bl blame um, the right people. The So they, a voter in Ward 8 happened to be in the booth and said, wait a minute, my ballot's already filled out. <laughs> And then other people heard it, and then they realize, oh, my God, they've been handing out already filled out ballots. Wow. 
That's very concerning. Just well, saying. that's concerning because I also heard with regard to that uh, nefarious second ballot question in Manchester yep. that uh, people did not fill it out because they uh, yes. they didn't understand the language. And when they got to the bowling uh, to the ballot, yep. thing, they were told they, they had were to. told you have to fill it out yes. and that you should vote yes. Yes. So. I have concerns that there's, you know, and there's no way, unless unfortunately, if you're ever at the polls and you're voting and you see something peculiar, you need to really document it. You need to give, because without a name of somebody who was told they had to fill it right. in, there's no way to substantiate it's it. It's all anecdotal and, you know, it is what it is. Um, I did get a message. I will tell you also at Ward 11, which is at Gosler School, um, I was really surprised by how they set up the flow of it. It was because a mess. It was, if it, this was supposed it, to keep people safe, safe from COVID, it was it, 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 it was did the opposite. Because uh, it, it was, was totally like bad. we actually created there. We yes. created this funnel. So first of all, very strange. We didn't have uh, curtains on most of the booths. So I actually stood there while I was waiting to yeah. put my ballot in the machine where we had a line. So so we had set up over here. So the entire gymnasium over here was yes. just open space. Yeah. You get your ballot back here. And then we were all just funneled into this super crowded thing where people were voting and where you were standing in line to put in your ballot. So we were just all there. And I just merrily was able to watch people vote and watch how who How they were voting yeah, for they, and why because would, I was stuck in that line for, you know, a good why, five minutes. I, I, and I was like, why didn't they just move that part to the entrance so it would have yes. flowed, so you would have come in well, like even, this, even and then, then you would have gone I was out. thinking about the whole six-foot distancing thing, right? Oh, we didn't have that at no, all. No, no, not <laughs> at all. But I'm thinking, so they had those open, the open, you know, booths, right? But wouldn't it have seemed like they should have had every other one closed? If I can't be at an every other one, I have no. To but do you have have you not noticed the six feet only works directionally in whatever direction yeah. the person who's insisting there is a six-foot thing? Right, it's, it's not a circumference. It's, it's not, not actually, like, I went to the beach once and I had a girl literally go, no, 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 you can't sit next to me. You're six feet closer. So I, I, I just moved forward. Right. And that was okay. And then she was like, yes, that's fine. And I was like, look, I hate to break Take it, it but to this you, news, still... but this is still six feet. So I've got this from um, another person um, who says their polling location was Ward 4. When you go in, you show them your ID and they hand you a raffle ticket that you give to the ballot person to get your ballot, which I agree. Now, when I did this, I went over and there was a person I knew handing out the ballots underneath a piece of plexiglass mm -hmm. and I needed a pen because that wasn't that the whole thing. Meanwhile, a different gentleman sat down with ballots and pens and I really think if I was trying to be clever, I could have gotten two ballots because he seemed very confused about what I was. All I wanted was a pen. And he kept, instead of giving me just a pen, he was trying to give me two yeah. ballots and a pen. And I was like, no, I already have my ballot. Um, anyways, it says, uh, la, la. one of the people that was handing out the raffle tickets was dropping them on the floor. I picked up one of the tickets and gave it to the guy who was checking my name. If I had wanted to, I could have kept the ticket that was on the floor and I easily could have voted twice. That is actually came to me from a Democrat in Ward 4. Um, there was just lots, many, many more um, hiccups, let's call them hiccups, than I've ever seen. Now, also to everyone's credit, we understand this was a tough year. Right. This was like all of it, but it's just- It wasn't that it, different. It, 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 it just, to me, I was like, look, if you were trying to plausibly follow your own silly rules of what you think yeah. how this how should work, it nothing we, no. you did there. I, had, I mean, was in my ward, in my ward I literally goal. walked in, had to wait in this line. Then I got in the line for my, and I mean, right up on top of each other. Then we had to get back, come back through that same crowd yep. that I just finished the line, getting another line, which is parallel right next to the yes. line that I just finished <laughs> to get my little raffle ticket, to get my ballots. And then I had to go wait over there in a line to get into a booth. And then when I came out of the booth, I had to come all the way back almost up to where I got my little raffle ticket thing and wait in line to put the my ballot in the machine. So maybe a, a, 
I don't know, just even like a all serpentine, a big, like, yeah, like a big, uh, you know. A, so, so there are, there's room for improvement. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Hopefully, we won't be faced right. with these kinds of challenges. But you know, also based on the union leader, COVID's over well, because uh, Pfizer now for the past two, possibly three days. I think it's actually three days. No COVID news on the front of no, the newspaper. No, I noticed that. So this is, uh, it's been nonstop since April, every day. Everybody's dying, everybody's attention. dying, everybody's the dying. Everybody's counter, dying. The little counter, all of that. None of that, including today, and I posted this on my Facebook, you know, a photo with people riding bicycles without masks on, good for you, I think that's how it should be. Um, and then a couple kind of walking behind them who are clearly walking together and not socially distancing, also not in masks. First time in nine right. months, right. Uh, no caption, shaming, criticizing, you know, saying things. So, you know, the good news is regardless, I believe we do not still have an actual president. Like, right? Well, we have a... Pre oh, well, they haven't picked... The no, no, no. One, right? There hasn't actually so, so, been so, a... But the newspaper, yeah. you know, because the union leader... But I would it's like... lost its way. I it's... would like the news, please, <laughs> union leader. I would not like your editorials on the headline that says things like... Biden, whatever it was, 270, please hold. What was you know? that? And I was like, wow, this isn't even like a headline. This isn't even news. No. This is you no. editorializing I... in your headline. And that is just not good enough. I, I mean, saw... I'm not going to renew my right. subscription. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm really struggling. I, I was trying to be like, go help the newspaper right? because they provide me with news. And I do enjoy reading it every morning. I mean, but I'm I, not I, really I, sure I want to keep... I'm actually thinking about maybe I, you know, could float this here, but I'm thinking about like just doing a fundraiser and being like, hey, you guys want an independent state house correspondent? I have to go testify. I mean, I'm <laughs> interested in this stuff anyway. I'll just go up there and report yeah. on it, you know, and have people support it that way. We can maybe do it as a, a, a sort of. A, I know, it's weird, a, right? It's freestyle it's, it's... kind of uh, attempt. Um, so, so well, the good news is hopefully, I guess, for Thanksgiving, New Hampshire is one of the few states that is uh, open and is not forcing, you know, quarantine. Crazy things and telling you you things. can't have so many people. I'll tell you, I was at a neighbor's. So, offshoot, I think I talked about this before election. So, the bums that were living in my house, yet yeah, more bums broke into my house yesterday, or maybe not yesterday, maybe the day before. Um, it's mind boggling. Uh, for a variety of reasons. So I was over there and I was talking to my older neighbor. Um, she's in her 80s and she, I told her, I was, Dan and I are going on vacation and she asked, she kind of said, aren't you, are you, are you afraid of catching COVID? I said, I don't think vacation causes COVID. I don't think I have any more chance of catching COVID someplace else as I do here. And I mean, it depends on, I guess, what you're doing. I'm not getting on a cruise ship, not that there are any cruise ships, but um, she said very mo point blank, I said, are you worried about catching COVID? And she said, no. And her daughter was there um, helping her with some things and her daughter works at the hospital. She's, a, um, I think she's a PA or a Occupation registered, one of, no, one of those, the, not the nurses that can do prescriptions. She's oh. like up there, you know. Okay. Um, She's like, yeah, I work at the hospital and I'm not worried about it. And we got talking and my older neighbor goes, I had scarlet fever. I was quarantined for a month. I'm not really worried about, it. you know, like she's just of the mindset that I've lived through so many other things. I'm not going to. And I said, stop living so that you can stay alive. It's just right. kind of crazy. Yeah, it's it goes back to that whole thing of uh, if you're so afraid of dying, how are you living? living. So, yep. you know, I think that's something people should just well, generally and reflect on. Also, coincidentally, Even Pfizer apparently. Bums <laughs> yeah. should be reflecting well, on how are you, you know, living. The thing, the thing with the bums that bugs me, and I did drive by the federal house courthouse this morning because I wanted to see. There are way. This is not. This is not people who are temporarily displaced. This is not a handful. This is not people who are just you know not don't have the cognitive skills to be able to make a decision that they no, can't I live outdoors. Think the, the, the choice of where it is and stuff is starting to feel almost like a, a, a protected a occupation yes. of some form. Yes. And there's on one side of the courthouse, there was probably a dozen. And as I came around the corner, I was like, holy moly, there has to be 30 tents on the other side. And uh, there's just the, most of these people 
including the people standing with the little panhandle signs that say, you know, oh, I'm homeless. I saw a girl over on the corner of Granite coming over here. She does not look homeless at all. Um, not that I think there's a look for homeless, but she just looked like she came out of her house and decided she's going to hold a sign there and get some money. And um, they, they are not, these are people making a choice. This is a lifestyle choice, unfortunately, for many people. And that choice means you don't have any rules. There is no... There are no restrictions. You live wherever you want. You take whatever you want. These people Whoa. in my house are taking, I mean, Dan and I literally emptied the kitchen of belongings because if we don't, they're going to break in again to try to get their their belongings. Half of their belongings were in things that belong to me because they're so, state so, steel. I mean, I think part of this issue is the breakdown of property rights. Right. Like everybody so, so, stuff so belongs once, to once, everybody. Yeah, like once you inculcate people with the notion that we all own everything together, which we don't. You know, I mean if we want to parse that out a little bit, then it's like so, you know, so Tammy's house is my house and, right. and you your know, car's mine. Or, you know, so so <laughs> you know, on on the face of it, we understand that that can't really be <laughs> how it works, right? Because you understand that your house is supposed to be yours, you have a title to yep. it, your car is yours, you know, your phone is yours, whatever, right? But somehow, somewhere in how we're educating people and teaching them how to think about the Everybody world. Everybody has a right to, to, things, to, to other you know, things that aren't theirs. So, so that, I think, is what we're starting to see is there's this mentality of, well... You're it, not it's, using it, it's, so, it's, so it's, I can. So, so I'm, I'm just going to take what's yours because that's convenient for me. And on that note, I mean, over the weekend, we had my neighbor came over and she said, um, hey, I saw someone coming up from the end of the cul-de-sac with a trolley. There was a woman. There was a guy in an orange vest. They were dragging their stuff down the street. They clearly dropped something. She originally thought it was Louie doing some raping yeah. in, in the dark. And then she was like, <laughs> no. And then she saw there was a mine uh, like a light. light. So, and and they set up camp behind our fence. Now, we... we um, border on Gosler, so right. there's a toll hill and it's very dry back there we've had fires we've talked about it on the show you know we, we used to frequently have fires when the school kids yeah. were out there but now we have we had one earlier this year at my neighbor's house so it's dangerous it's not just like oh i don't you know one i don't, I don't really want that there but mostly because i think you know, my house could burn yeah. down. So if, if, if these people living in a tent behind the fence yes. would decide that they're going to use Sterno or whatever to stay warm and then they wander off and go to get something else and they come back and now your fence well, is on fire and, you, and you're and you asleep in bed. And how is this okay? I mean, the shocking thing to me was in the end, they didn't put up camp there. But, you know, Louie and I had a conversation. Like, I'm, I'm more of the thought process i'm like eh, it hardly ever goes better when you call the police it just makes that person's life worse i mean i think an interesting study would be to take these homeless people and to say unsheltered know, we're calling them unsheltered okay now. what would uh, there's like, new words you know um is is to <laughs> to kind of ask you know like where where did your life take a left turn that sort of drove you on this because i think for a lot of people it probably will be drugs and then some kind of interaction with law enforcement that then puts people in the system and then the next thing you know we've created a class of people who can't work who can't because they literally like don't have a car they they yeah. can't get a job because they have a record like all of that stuff right so we Louie and i discussed and i said look my preference is let's not call the police but also i don't <laughs> want they were that in here, your house you know? so so in the end, we went over and our thinking was, um, and it was kind of cool because our whole neighborhood, yeah. like we have five it little houses. It is very good. I've gotten Everyone really good. came together. Yeah, our name, even my little neighborhood over on Parker Street, I've, you know, I get to know more and more people and everybody's paying attention and different neighbors are calling and people are watching because this impacts their, I mean, 
I mean, it impacts your it property impact, yes. values. It impacts your lifestyle. So, like, I don't want, you know, everyone else on the street is, you know, we have two young-ish yeah. couples. So I put myself in that, you know. And then we have, the, you know. The uh, people uh, who've been there for a long time. Long time, you know, since, uh, you know, most of them are living yeah. in their parents' houses, yeah. I think, at this stage from the 50s. And, you know, it just doesn't seem like a safe environment. No. And immediately it was just, like, dirty. Like, there was all well, socks and, thing. like, one piece well, of trash. I, and To be honest, Carla, I, I, the empathy. Oh. I try to have empathy for people in, in rough situations because there are all sorts of situations, right? But what boggles the mind is the filth. Like, we went into our house, this is before election day, and it isn't like, okay, let's break into that house and we'll have someplace dry and warm to sleep and they have the electricity on so we could use the refrigerator and every, you know, and we'll just hunker down right. in my, no, wall to wall filth. Yeah. Filth. And, I think and I'm that like, I, the things you walk in and you see things and you're like, I, I can't even. And they've taken stuff that was mine because I was still renovating the house. Oh, my stuff apparently was in their way because there's piles of it outside. So, <laughs> wow. You can't make this up. So my oh. pity meter for homeless people right now is not good. And I feel bad for the people who truly are displaced and truly do have mental um, health I mean, down in the Piscataua River, it's now a 10 village. Yeah. You know, there's a whole. Something's got to give. You know, so and it's, it's not. And the mayor of Manchester would like to just blame the state. But reality is. No. You've got to take control uh, of it yourself. This is your, this is your, the mayor of Manchester. This is where the problem is. Yes, maybe there's a way you can get people back to the communities they're supposed to be in, so, but. So maybe, uh, because we're gonna run out of time for today, but you know, I think it'll be interesting to have a conversation about what the solutions are, right? Like we all see the problem, yep. right? But I mean, part of it is that, that you know, we have to reinstill a respect for property rights. Yep. Like we have to figure out what to do with these people. I don't think it's just COVID. We are spending a lot of money on this issue already. Yep. I would like to know exactly where, how, how much and, and where how, that the money is are. going. Because if we're spending $10 million and we have, you know, 150 to 300 homeless people, we could probably just give them hotel rooms and it would be cheaper than whatever we're not doing right now. So I would like to do a deep dive and maybe start to come up with like, oh, here are some proposals for things we think that could solve the problem. Uh, but for, you know, people back home, remaining vigilant, letting your neighbor know if Watch, someone has yeah. moved into your, you know, when neighborhood. When you see something, you know, see something, say something. I hate to say that, but no, no. no, but if your neighbors, like, if you know that, you know, you've got a 75-year-old neighbor and there's some random dude on a bicycle in her backyard, probably not, you probably want to at least let the neighbor know. <laughs> So we have a minute left. Yeah. So uh -oh. congratulations to everybody, all the Republicans across the state who did and win, Democrats, and I mean, you know yeah, whatever. everyone who won. Um, I, guess. I very much look forward to seeing uh, the list of legislation when that list comes out. And um, obviously, enjoy this wonderful weather. It's not going to be. I don't know what last Tuesday's weather was. That was absolutely insane. We were in a snow <laughs> globe. Awful. It was miserable and windy and awful. Period. Awful. Uh, but then now today it's like 70 again and it's going to stay in the 50s and at least until next weekend. So yay Indian summer. Yes. Um, but that's it. Um, if you have any questions or anything, by all means, email us. And you can get us at G Oh, geez, I can't even speak. At <laughs> manchtalk at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page, Manch Talk. You can follow us on YouTube. Um, if you have any ideas, if you have any input on the whole homeless thing, if you have a story about election day, send it our way, manchtalk at gmail.com. That's all we got for this week. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee, and um, that's it. Take care. Bye.